This is Classics vs. Keto, a new series where I make one dish two ways. The first way is a more classic way, the way that I would like to eat it, and the other way is to see if we can make it a keto version in light of the growing number of people on the diet, including members of my family and myself at times throughout the year. And first up on the chopping block is one of the summer's finest treats, crab cakes, so let's just jump right into it. Now I'm about to turn on precision dicing mode. Now I'm gonna look to cut each one of these into the same fineness, and I'm going for a very fine dice. Not only are some of the peppers and the onions are gonna be cooked and incorporated into the crab cakes, but we're also gonna keep a lot of them raw diced with the apple and the onion and the jalapeno all at the end as sort of like a confetti along the plate, along with some of the cooked dice. So you're gonna have a really fun, colorful garnish that's also edible and add to the dish. And now you can kind of chop them all roughly and then, and then just process them down till they're sort of all a nice fine dice, but I like to take my time, practice my knife skills, and get them exactly how I want them. I'm just gonna cut thin cheeks, just like that around the sides. You could just leave this as is. Just take a knife and pull back. Use this finger as sort of like a guide to measure how thick you want them. Push forward, pull back, and then just cut them into this really small dice. When it's like this, I'll take my knife and I'll push firmly down on one end, and then just do that. See how this one's just a little bit bigger? This one's just a little bit more square. That's just a, a little bit more precise if you're willing to handle a little bit more waste. I'm not saying you need to go this fine. You can go this fine, that's okay. But just so you know, if you want to dial in the precision, get them smaller, get them finer, that's how you do it. Then just go ahead and dice the rest of the peppers. Then go through and cut the onion. And again, we want to cut this the same size maybe even smaller. So I'm gonna cut the top and the bottom off, cut the onion in half, and then cut those halves into quarters and then peel a few layers at a time. We can get these really fine slices and then ultimately turn them and cut them into a really fine dice. We'll save the other half of this onion for our tartar sauce. Now for the jalapeno, just cut the stem off and then stand it up. And if you have a really sharp knife, you can just kind of wiggle it in between the rib of the jalapeno and just slice off the flesh, which is all we really need. And then we can cut it just like we did the rest of the peppers. Then you just wanna get the, all the vegetables mixed up well and take a quarter of that mixture out and put it into a separate bowl for later. So now we're gonna cook this and then we're gonna save this for garnish and then we're gonna add diced up apple into that. It's gonna add some nice sweetness, but I don't wanna chop that up yet or else it might brown. So I'm gonna hold this off to the side till we're ready to use it. Then we just need to chop up the chives really finely. So I'm just gonna take a paper towel and just roll it up into this long rectangle. And then I can bunch up the chives and then use the paper towel to roll them up and keep them into a nice tight bunch so I can get a beautifully fine dice on those chives. It's gonna look really nice and garnished but we're also gonna use that inside of the crab cakes. And then we're gonna take some parsley and I'm just gonna eyeball it. My eyes tell me how much I need. I know after I chop this bunch, it's kinda gonna shrink in volume by about half at least. So just go through, chop that up fine and get that into a bowl and set that off to a side. So now we're saving a smaller amount for garnish. But what I need to do now is saute these peppers and onions. And I'm gonna get a little bit of Calabrian chili with that as well. And we wanna kind of soften them, bring out a little bit more flavor in them, and they're gonna go into the crab cakes. So we need them to get cooked and cooled before we start making the cakes. So let's head on over to the stove and bang these out. So I just get a pan on about medium, medium high heat with a little bit of oil in them. Once it's hot, get the peppers and onions in. Once they've been cooking for a minute or two, I like to grate in a couple cloves of garlic, get that worked in, start to get that fragrance seasoned with salt and pepper. And we're really just looking to develop that transformation that peppers go through in terms of flavor and smell. It's like roasty, a little bit more caramelized. We just want them to soften up so that they don't stay too crunchy inside of the crab cake. And once we're there, then we're gonna add about a tablespoon of chopped Calabrian chili and work that in for about a minute or two more. And once we can pick up sort of roasty caramelized notes in the aroma of the peppers, but they still have some nice color and brightness to them, we wanna get them off the stove, transfer them into a bowl, and let those cool completely before we start to work with them again. 
We got our vegetables cooked and we're just gonna let these cool. It's a little too hot to incorporate into the crab cakes right now. Now, while that cools, we need to talk about my new favorite health routine thanks to our sponsor today, Athletic Greens. AG1 by Athletic Greens has now been part of my daily routine for about two months now, long before they started sponsoring this channel. I use it as sort of like a nutritional foundation to make sure that regardless of whether I'm eating really good or really poorly at that moment in time, I'm covering my bases on a nutritional standpoint. It contains 75 vitamins and minerals, whole food source superfoods, dairy-free probiotics, and adaptogens and antioxidants to support your energy, focus, gut health, digestion, and immune system without the need to take multiple products or pills. All I have to do is mix one scoop or one travel pack of AG1 with AG1 eight ounces of water. Then you shake it like a cocktail and then you drink it in the morning or with a workout and you're good to go. The best thing about it is I genuinely enjoy the taste which makes it a routine that I look forward to every day and can keep up. And right now, Athletic Greens is going to give my community an immune supporting free one year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase of AG1. So head on down to the description, hit up the link and let's get back into the recipe. Now onto the crab meat. And what we have here is about a pound of pre premium lump crab meat. It is pasteurized, and if you can get your hands on fresh, that's great, but this is good enough. Drain out any liquid in there, and, and what you'll see is just these beautifully hand-packed pieces of the lump crab meat. And what we wanna do is go through and pick every single one and inspect it, make sure that there are no shells in them. There's nothing like a shell to kill your appetite when you're eating any sort of seafood. And see, good thing I checked because I found the shell right here. That's a big one. That would have ruined somebody's bite. And a few pieces later, I found another one. So it really pays to go through and check each piece. So now these are shucked and clean. We're gonna set these off to the side. Well, we make our little slushy. Now, crab cakes to me are nothing more than like crab meatballs. You need some sort of filling and flavor, some sort of slurry binder kind of situation that bind the meat or the crab together. And that's what we're about to make. So now we're gonna go in with about a quarter cup of a uh, nice thick mayo. And then we're gonna add a tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce. And if you're gonna make this keto, it's a questionable keto ingredient, so you might wanna omit that. Otherwise, it's a nice flavor addition. Then we're gonna add a tablespoon of Dijon, tablespoon of chives, a tablespoon of the parsley, tablespoon of Old Bay, a little salt, pepper, a little lemon zest, and we're gonna mix that up well. And then we're gonna crush a sleeve of Ritz crackers, turn those into crumbs, add about a quarter to a half cup of panko breadcrumbs, get that into a bowl, season with a little bit of salt, and set that to the side. I'm gonna take this recipe and I'm gonna split half of it and make half of it keto. And all we have to do, if you decide that you need to make some keto or you wanna make them all the same, you can just customize it at this point. Anything that's keto, you wanna exclude the breadcrumbs with and replace it with something like a guar gum or a xanthan gum or almond flour. These are all keto friendly, low carb options for thickening and binding things. I went with guar gum, it had the least amount of carbs out of all of them at one gram. And this re made some really nice crab cakes. So we're gonna go with that and you do not need a lot. We just wanna set up a sheet tray with some parchment paper on them that we're gonna place the crab cakes on when they're formed. It's gonna make sure that they don't stick while they chill in the fridge. All the crab into a bowl. And just like our meatball recipe, the egg is going to get mixed directly into the crab. We want the full binding power of the one egg that we're gonna use. I'm just gonna beat it first, just so I don't have to beat it into here and break up all of those lumps. And we just wanna mix the crab extremely gently anytime we need to incorporate anything. Then to that, we're gonna add our slurry. Again, mixing very gently, and then we're gonna divide the mixture in half. Half for the classic, half for the keto. I also forgot to add the bell pepper mixture. So we're gonna take a few tablespoons and add it to each bowl and get that worked in as well. Then for the classic, the binder that we're gonna use is about a quarter cup of the Ritz cracker panko mixture. Get that worked in, and then all we need for the keto is about a tablespoon, if that, of the guar gum. It's gonna go a long way in binding these really nicely. That one pound of crab should make about four patties, so two patties for each style of crab cake. And once you've formed the keto crab cakes, then we can work on the classic crab cakes, which is the same forming of a patty. The only difference is we're gonna drop them in that panko Ritz cracker breadcrumb mixture and then place those on the sheet tray. 
So now we got our classic and our keto, and these need to sit in the refrigerator, firm up and tighten up and kind of build some structure so that they don't fall apart when they cook for a minimum of 30 minutes, but I like to do it for one hour. Now while the crab cakes rest, we can get started on the tartar sauce, which starts with chopped up red onion, capers, and cornichon. And we're just gonna dice them all up fine and then mix them all up together and then chop them all up into what could resemble a, like sort of a relish and then get that into a bowl. Now here's a good example of why what you might use uh, something like a QP mayo, which is a Japanese higher quality mayo, which uses only egg yolks. So it's a richer, more full flavored mayo versus like a regular Hellman's mayo, which uses whole eggs. It's a little bit more mild, it's a little cheaper. So that's better for going inside of the mix. But for the tartar sauce, which we're making, I like to use the QP. So into that bowl with about a cup of the mayo, and then we're gonna mix that together, followed by some of the chives, some lemon zest. I'm gonna cut about a quarter of the cheek of the lemon and add the juice of that lemon to the mix. About a tablespoon of Dijon, and we're gonna mix that all together. Hit it with some salt and pepper, and that's keto. And if you wanna not go keto, and you wanna add a little bit more flavor, you can add Worcestershire sauce. Stir it up, and you got yourself a nice little tartar sauce. Classic version. But if you want a variation, split the tartar sauce in half, add a teaspoon of chopped Calabrian chili, and you've got a spicy tartar sauce that's beautiful. Now I just wanna set these into the refrigerator so that they can sort of set and let those flavors marry. Now here we got a fennel bulb. And a little fun fact is I actually hate fennel, the taste of that anise licorice flavor. And so eating this just raw, untreated is, is not something I do. But there is a way that I do like it. There's a way to take that gross flavor out of the vegetable and bring out a sweet, crunchy thing that you could nibble on and is delicious. So that's what we're gonna do. And we're gonna make a little bit of a salad that's gonna go on top of the crab cakes. So just wanna cut off, take some of the exterior leaves off. I don't need too much, so I just want these center pieces. Cut the tops off. Then we're just gonna slice them really thin. And I don't go paper thin. I just go about maybe an eighth inch thick. They will sort of soften and break down once they're marinated. And then get those into a bowl. And what we're gonna do is take that lemon, take another cheek of it. We're gonna first hit it with some salt. That's gonna break it down a little bit. It's also gonna season it. Then with the lemon, you want that acid to like almost cook it. And instantly it sweetens up. I don't smell the licorice anymore. I smell sweetness and then just olive oil on top. And so we're just gonna let that marinate, break down, and you can probably already, it's already changed. It's so refreshing. In the summer, you throw some grapefruit in there, a little greens on top, and it's an amazing salad. It's delicious. I've got some frisee here, and like, look how strong frisee is. It's gonna add some height and body to it, so we have something that can stand on top of our crab cake without looking limp. You see how you can get it to just like stand tall? That's what we're looking for. And we're just gonna give it a wash. And I always store my greens in a damp towel, loosely sealed, and it'll keep it nice and fresh. And then to that, I have some parsley still left over from earlier in the recipe. I'm just gonna pick the leaves and throw them in. It'll add a little bit more depth of green and a different flavor, which is nice. And so this is gonna be the garnish that goes on top. And now we can slice up the apple. And we're just going for a similar dice to this. All you gotta do is cut these thin slices from the outer edge of the apple towards the core. Maybe you'll get four slices per side. Then you wanna stack them up, cut them into little sticks, turn that whole section, and then cut those sticks into little fine dices. And then get those mixed up into the peppers. Now we can cook the crab cakes. Now they firmed up nicely. See the nice pieces of crab in it. Now all we have to do is cook them and then throw it all together. Now I like to get a nice large cast iron at about medium, medium high heat and let that heat up really well. I also have the oven preheating at 425 degrees. Once the pan is hot, I'm gonna go in with a little bit of oil and then a knob of butter. And then once that butter is nice and bubbly and hot, we're gonna go in and we're gonna add the crab cakes. And we just wanna cook them on like a slow, medium heat and let them brown nicely. And we're going to use this fish spatula. It's gonna allow us to kind of creep underneath and, and mess around with the crab cakes gently. And it's also got a bend, which is helpful. I want to cook them for about four or five minutes to allow that one side to brown nicely. Just give it a peek. You can even creep down. It'll help you see if the outer edges of the crab cake are browning, which is an indication that they're ready to be flipped. 
and then we want to give them a flip. Let that other side brown for maybe another four or five minutes. They should be nicely browned on both sides. And then at this point, they still need a little bit more time to fully cook due to the center. So we're going to pop them into a sheet tray. We're going to get them into that 425 degree oven and we're just going to cook them until the internal temperature registers around 150, 160 degrees, about 10 minutes just to have the crab cakes set. And there you have a crab cake, one that is classic and one that is keto. So while the crab cakes rest, we can throw together our salad. So you just wanna add that fennel to the greens, season with salt. Then we wanna take some of that lemon oil that the fennel was sitting in, add that to our raw diced medley of vegetables, as well as the greens. I tried to add some of the vegetables to the salad, but they're just not cut properly for this salad, so disregard me adding those. Get the salad tossed, and then we can start the plate. And we're gonna start with the classic. We're gonna use the classic tartar sauce. On top of that, we're going with the classic crab cake. Then we're gonna take some of that sauteed pepper mixture and sort of just create a little ring around the tartar sauce. And then on top of that, we're gonna go in with that raw confetti of vegetables. They both add very different flavors and textures. Then goes the chives. And then on top of the crab cake goes that salad, a little bit of lemon zest, and then finally some chives on top. And then for the keto crab cake, we're gonna go with the spicy tartar sauce, the keto crab cake on top. Again, with the cooked confetti of peppers, the raw confetti of peppers, chives, fennel salad on top, some lemon zest and some chives as well. Let's go with the classic first. Well, the classic is phenomenal. Let's see how the keto is. Holds together nicely, forkable. Mm. It's beautiful. So now you got options. Whether you like a classic or you need a keto, you now have control of your situation. Recipe is going to be linked down in the description. That's all that I have today. I'll see you next time. Until then, take care of yourself and go feed yourself. Thank God it's spring, which means it's burger weather. So if you want a great chili cheeseburger recipe, I got one on the screen right now for you, along with a few other videos. Thanks for watching.